بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his countless favors and ni'mah that he has bestowed upon us. The greatest of them, no doubt, is the ni'mah of Islam. And we thank him <clears throat> for these opportunities that we have here at our, at our masjid, Masjid Dar al-Arqam in Brooklyn, New York, to study and to seek ilm. Today, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's permission, we want to start a new book. And this book, the name of it is Rawdatul Uqala Nuzhatul Fudala. And this is a book by Ibn Hibban. Muhammad ibn Hibban, ibn Ahmed ibn Hibban, Abu Hatim al Busti, Rahimahullah, he passed away in 354 al Hijri. And it's a book about akhlaq, or suluk, suluk al nas ma'a rabbihim, wa ama'a anfusihim, wa ama'a al mujtamah al ladihum fihi. It's a book about akhlaq and conduct yourselves between you and your Lord and you and yourself and you and your society that you live in. It has to do with your family, with your neighbors, with strangers, with people you know, and other than that. The book is consists of about 50 chapters or 50 sections. Nah? And we want to take a little bit during this time, right before Salat al-Isha. Salat al-Isha comes in rather late. And after Isha, the people are, uh, are anxious to get home. To, to get rest in order to prepare themselves for the next day. So we want to take this time before uh, Salatul Isha, a good 10, 15 minutes every night, and benefit what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes possible for us to benefit. The name of this book, before we get into the chapter, we want to look and see what we benefit from this title, Rawdatul Uqala. Rawda is like a Jannah or a garden or a Bustan. Naam. It's a garden. It's a place where you go to relax. Naam. But this place is for the uqala, the intelligent. The intelligent. When nuzha, nuzha tul fudala, nuzha is a rauda. It's a place where you go, you walk up, you walk down. It has good scenery. It has water. It has trees. It has shade. Naam. And you go there and you relax. You go there to relax. You have something from food, you have something from drink with you, you have whoever's with you, you have nice scenery. Naam. So why is it that they name their books? There's even other books like this, like Riyadh Salihin. Why, which is the Gardens of the Righteous, why do they name their books these kind of titles? Naam. And perhaps the likes of these books, using this word Rauda, it comes from a hadith that uh, some of the ulama they authenticate it, like Sheikh Al-Albani, rahimahullah ta'ala, comes in hadith of Anas, radiyallahu anhu, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal, إِذَا مَرَرْتُمْ بِرِيَاضِ الْجَنَّةِ فَرْتَعُوا If you pass by the gardens of Jannah, فَرْتَعُوا فَرْتَعُوا means to enjoy yourself, and to relax, have something from enjoyment, and from food, and relaxation, where you sit back, and you relax, and you look at the scenery, and you benefit from the shade, and you benefit from the nice breeze, and you enjoy yourself. So the Prophet wasallam said, if you all pass بِالْرِيَاضِ Jannah from the goddess of Jannah, فَرْتَعُوا Then enjoy yourself and relax. Relax yourselves and enjoy yourself. قَالُوا وَمَا رِيَاضُ الْجَنَّةِ What is رِيَاضِ الْجَنَّةِ? What are the goddess of Jannah? So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal, hilaq al-dhikr, this hadith is akhraju ahmed, is the circles of dhikr, meaning it's the study groups that are in the masajid, the study groups that are in the masajid. Naam. It also comes, the likes of this hadith, from Abi Huraira and the Tirmidhi, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَا مَرَرْتُمْ بِرِيَاضِ الْجَنَّةِ فَرْتَعُوا If you pass by the places of Jannah or the gardens of Jannah, then enjoy yourself and relax. Kick back, put your feet out, relax, 
Enjoy the scene. Have something to eat. Comfort yourselves. Enjoy the opportunity. Take advantage of the opportunity and comfort yourselves and enjoy yourselves. Naam. Qultu ya Rasulullah, ma riyad al-jannah. Abu Rahira said, I said to the Prophet, what is the gardens of Jannah? So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-Masajid, the masjids. Naam. Qultu, wa ma rut'u, what is the enjoyment that we find in the masjid? So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. Meaning the dhikr of Allah, the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are very familiar with the statement of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As it comes in hadith of uh, Sahih Muslim, وَمَجْتَمَعَ قَوْمٌ فِي بَيْتٍ مِنْ بُيُوتِ اللَّهِ And no people gather in the house from the houses of Allah. يَتْلُونَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ Reciting the book of Allah. وَيَتَدَارَسُونَهُ بَيْنَهُمْ And studying it amongst one another. Tayyip, we're going to start right here. يَتَدَارَسُونَ مَا قَالَ يَدْرُسُونَ وَمَا قَالَ يُدَرِّسُونَ قَالَ يَتَدَارَسُونَ For what does this alif convey? Ya Umar. He didn't say يَدْرُسُونَ studying. He didn't say يُدَرِّسُونَ teaching. قَالَ يَتَدَارَسُونَ This is a statement of the Prophet. So what does this alif convey? What does this Aleph convey, Ya Abdul Malik? Uh, it, it, you feel Al Musharaka. Al Aleph, you feel Al Musharaka. The Aleph, it, it, it benefits. That they're doing it with one another. It's not one person in the corner reading here. It's not a person, oh, but two people are reading together. Or one person has a group, he's reading to a group. For example, if we said, Zaydun, Daraba Zaydun Ahmed, Ahmeda. Daraba Zaydun Ahmeda. Naam. Zayd hit Ahmed. Ahmed didn't do anything. But I said, Daraba Zaydun Ahmed. Um, what does this alif, what did this alif convey? Tadaraba Zaydun wa Ahmed. They hit one another. Naam. Now I said, Qatala Zaydun Rajulan. Naam. Or Qatala, uh, Fulan wa Fulan. One person killed the other. If I said, Qatala, what does Qatala convey? It's happening from both sides. Are you with me, Ya Umar? Ta'ib. Naam. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Yatluna kitab Allah. They are reading the book of Allah. وَيَتَدَارَسُونَهُ بَيْنَهُمْ They're studying amongst one another. No people do this. إِلَّا نَزَدَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّكِينَ Meaning this is the comfort that they're in. This is comfort. This is like going out. Some people to satisfy themselves, they go out into the gardens. Like إِخْوَةُ uh, يُوسُفْ uh, قَالْ يَا أَبَانَا مَا لَكَ لَا تَأْمَنَّ عَلَى يُوسُفْ when they said after that, Yarta wa yal'ab. Yarta wa yal'ab. Yarta is going to come, he's going to enjoy himself, and he's going to play. Naam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Illa nazalat alayhim as sakina. Where's the sakina entering in, in their pockets? Naam. Fi qulubihim. They're going to find comfort from where? From the house of Allah. Naam. وَغَشِيَتْهُمُ الرَّحْمَةِ The wrath, the mercy of Allah covers them. وَحَفَّتْهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ The malaika surround them. This is an expression of protection. حَفَّتْهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ وَذَكْرَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَنْ عِنْدَهِ And Allah mentions them. It's honor for them. This is how you get the high position. This is where the reward is. This is where the benefit is. What do we understand from this? Meaning, reading the books of the ulama. Naam, or reading the book of Allah and going through the hadith of the Messenger of Allah. Naam, it's like going through a park where there's shade and there's good scenery and there's waterfalls and there's a place you can put your feet in and relax and there's cold drink and there's nice food and you're with your loved ones. This is like that. 
Now, um, this is why they call their books Riyadh Salihin, or they call their book like this book that we are in, Raudatul Uqala. Now, um, meaning reading and contemplating and going over Masail, going over issues like what? The most beautiful names of Allah and the lofty descriptions of Allah and the actions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does. He's one alone and unique in it. He has no partners. He has no associates. Going over the description of Jannah, going over the horrors and the terrors of the hellfire, all of this is like going out and enjoying yourself and benefiting yourself. But this is this is benefiting what? Your mind, your psyche, your soul. Naam. It's like, for lack of a better words, a spiritual picnic. It's not the regular picnic where you have chicken and you have volleyball. Naam, and you have races. But this is like a picnic, naam, where you go and you relax yourself. Meaning, going through these masail, going through these issues that's in the book of Allah, in the sunnah of the message of Allah, from ayat and hadith, and the masail that come out of it, and the fawaid, and the benefits that's in it, it is a benefit for your soul. The same thing with reading about the prophet. And the stories of the prophets and the stories that they went through and the situations that they went through and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewarded the righteous and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished uh, the, the oppressive na'am, and the disobedient and the etiquettes that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught his companions. All of this is like a riyadah. It's like going through a jannah. It's like going through something that's bliss, something that's comfortable. Na'am. And this is why you all in the masjid today, because you have experienced this and you have found this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says about his prophet, Hu alladhi ba'atha fil ummiyin rasulan minhum. He is the one that sent to the illiterate a, pro- a messenger from amongst them. Yatsulu alayhim ayati. What is the prophet doing? Yatsulu alayhim ayati. He recites to them the signs from Allah. What happens when he does this? Well, you zakki him. It purifies them. It makes them leave off all the jahiliyyah that they have. Their bad habits. Where they get this? When they sit down with the Prophet and he reminds them of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. You zakki him. Wal kitaba wal hikmah. He teaches them that which is in the book of Allah. And he teaches them that which is in the sunnah of the messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa in kanu min qablu. And they were before this far astray. What brought them to guidance? These sittings. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sit down with them and recite to them. And this is a purification for them. So this is the gardens of the righteous. But here, this is Rawdatul this is Uqala. This is the gardens of those who have intellect and benefit. We know Rawdu to Sufaha. Rawdu to Sufaha, discos, park, music, the beach. Naam. How the Rawdu to Sufaha? Those are the gardens of the ignorant. Those don't, don't have anything to do with the hereafter. They're not reminded of the hereafter. This here is Rawdu to Uqala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifically Describes the believers that they have this thing called the aql or lub, and that they're the people and they're the ones who have intellect. What does this mean that they have intellect? Meaning they use their mind to benefit themselves. They don't use their mind to harm themselves. Now, use all that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them. Allah has favored us over animals and over cattle. Na'am. And with that, you don't find a cattle, you don't find cattle harming themselves. Na'am. You don't find them harming themselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Am tahsabu anna aktharuhum yasma'un, aw ya'qilun, inhum illa kal an'am, bel hum adallu sabila. Do you think that most of them, they hear and they have intellect and they think, inhum illa kal an'am, bel, they only like cattle. Like goats, like sheep, like cows, like camels. But in whom illa kal anam bal hum adallu sabila. They're worse than that because you're not going to find a, 
a camel smoking something that's going to harm his lungs. You're not going to find a, a sheep drinking something that harms him. You're not going to find that amongst them. Nah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he springs, he mentions in his book that his book is to benefit our aql and make our intellect more advanced and more enhanced so we can benefit from the life of this world. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we close with this for today. Inna anzalnahu Qur'anan arabiyan la'allakum ta'qilun. Allah sent down this Qur'an so we could use our intellect and benefit from the life of this world. Now, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. We don't have to reinvent the wheel and say, let me go sniff and taste everything. Let me see if this is halal. Let me try to see if it's good. Let me experience this to see if it's okay. We don't have to do that. We have the halal. We have the haram. Inna al-halal bayin. Wa inna haram bayin. It's already mapped out for us. Naam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kitabun. Anzalnahu ilayka mubarakun. Liyadabbaru ayatihi wa liyatadhakkara. Ulul al-bab. A book we have sent it down. It is blessed. The Quran is blessed. Fi baraka. And in khayr. It's good in it. Liyadabbaru ayati. So they can contemplate over the benefits that's in it. Waliyatadhakkaru. And so those, the ulul al-bab. What does ulul al-bab? Yani ashab al-uqul as-salim. Those who their aql is still salim. It's still intact. It's not warped. It didn't become marilda. Naam. It's still intact. It's still on its al-fitra, on its natural disposition. Naam. So this book is what? This book is Raudatul Uqala. This book is the gardens of those, their sense is still intact. They still have common sense. Naam. And they benefit from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and we'll uh, finish with this, إِنَّ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ لَآيَاتٍ لِأُولِ الْأَلْبَابِ Verily, in the creation of the heavens and the earth, and in the changing of the night of the day, are signs for those who have intelligence. Now, the disbelievers, they see the day and the night, now, they don't think anything about the hereafter. And there's a way to conduct yourself. And then Allah is going to hold them accountable. They don't contemplate about that. Who are these people? La ayatin li ulul albab. Who are ulul albab? Who are the people that have intellect? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alladheena yadhkuroon Allah qiyaman wa qu'udan wa ala jujubihim wa yatafakkaroon fi khalq al-samawati wal ard those who remember Allah when they're standing and when they're sitting and when they're on their sides and they contemplate the heavens and the earth. And they contemplate about the creation of the heavens and the earth. And they say, رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا سُبْحَانَكَ فَقِينَ عَذَابَ النَّارِ They say, Oh Lord, you have not created this in, in, in vain. For no purpose in falsehood. Faqina Adab and Nar. Save us from the hellfire. These are the uqala. These are those that are intelligent. This is our first lesson for the day. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us uh, make it easy for us to go through these, this book and benefit what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to benefit every night, ten to fifteen minutes until the time of the Adhan. Subhanakallahumma bihamdak ashallah illa illa and astaghfirullah to ilaik.